what is like first hand experience? What's it been like? It's okay. First, <laughs> I'd say it has its own issues because sure. Dora has its own philosophical, like or yeah, ideological issues. Right. Since they're very, very free software oriented, uh, they don't want to push FlatHub because FlatHub contains a lot of open, uh, a lot of proprietary apps. Yeah. They have their own Flatpak remote called Fedora Flatpaks. And mm-hmm. like I don't want to bash on Fedora like developers or like contributors, whatever. I think that's a horrible approach to push Fedora Flatpaks. It's a great idea mm-hmm. because like um FlatHub and Fedora Flatpaks, like Fedora's uh, repo- um Flatpak remote, they have different backends. Like so um FlatHub they use OS3 to uh, um like OS3 is a backend utility, and you can think of Git for binary files. Mm. And yeah, so FlatHub uses OS3 to like redistribute and uh, redistribute programs and things like that. Fedora Flatpaks they use OCI containers, which means like Docker containers. And it's a, again, as I said, it's a really cool idea. But because of Fedora's like, I guess very like free software oriented ideology. Mm-hmm. Um, they're kind of like they're ruining a bit the experience here, uh, because if they would push FlatHub, like Fedora would automatically have been a lot better. I didn't and... know they actually had their own uh, their own thing. That's that. I get it. Like, it... I I think the. I think the most important thing is the is user freedom. I know the 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 uh, free software guys like to talk about user freedom, but like if we're being honest right now, the user should be in a position where they can make that choice for themselves. Like that's actually user freedom there. Like I get it from you know software freedom whatever, but yeah, I know I agree. Like it should be pushing FlatHub. I, it's not a bad thing to have their own thing. Like that's okay if you want to do that. You want to have things specifically catered for your uh, for your system but <sighs> yeah I think it... it's it's weird yeah I, I think like the fact that they're just pushing fedora flatbacks is a really bad thing because mm-hmm. at hub because there are times when both fedora flatpaks and flathub have the same application right. for example gimp so like there's gimp built by fedora on the fedora flatpaks remote but there's one from hub which works a lot better but then like yeah it, that's like another issue like when you open gnome software like and when you want to choose your sources like dora flat packs what the hell is that like i thought they were just like the... taking the the flat packs that fit theirs and then just put it on their own thing that okay no i, I changed my mind that's a stupid idea <laughs> oh no no unfortunately they they, they actually Act is a stupid idea. That's exactly what they're doing. With uh, they come with a filtered version of FlatHub mm. that has literally seven apps. Um, out of a thousand five hundred ish, right? It's it's such a terrible approach. Uh, and like, I don't know if they fix it or not, but there was a time like I, actually, I think like last release mm. of Fedora thirty five, where it would go under the the name FlatHub. So when <laughs> And users like would try to install like GIMP, yeah, um, from FlatHub. They like they would be like, uh, okay, that doesn't exist. But when they tried to add the FlatHub remote, they would say that the um the uh, remote already exists. But uh... again, like Fedora was using a filtered, using a filtered version of FlatHub, which has seven apps, and this really misleads uh, users. Mm-hmm. And like that's one of the issues like I have with Silver Blue and just with Fedora altogether. Another issue I have it's it's not like for me personally, mm-hmm. it's for Nvidia users. And like as I said, like Fedora, they're really really free software oriented. So they try like they purposefully give a bad experience for Nvidia users. Mm-hmm. Like and like, uh, you have to add a third party. Uh, repository and then you have to install uh, nvidia drivers whereas on pop os like they come with nvidia drivers pre-installed if yeah, you want yeah. you want to do that i think that's the better approach but again like since the fedora they're very very free software oriented like they don't want this at all use the and, open source drivers use them you know yes. you want to <laughs> you don't want to no one at least to. yeah 
and at least like they've they made it uh, recently they've made it made it a lot better like mm-hmm. where you can install the nvidia drivers completely via the gui like yeah, from yeah. gnome software that's a really really nice approach unfortunately most documentation online are outdated <laughs> and and some documentation from fedora have terrible search engine optimizations so they're like at the bottom of google or perhaps even the second page so yeah it's it's really bad um <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh, really sad that's awesome i love that yeah and there's also um i remember Actually, no, actually, like, oh, yeah, yeah, the third problem, Anaconda. <laughs> Holy shit. Anaconda is, like, the worst installer I've ever used in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I mean, I don't want to rant too much because I don't like shitting on developers' work. I think that's a bit too rude. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> why, why, why don't we talk about what's good about uh, Silver Blue, then? Yeah, so it's the immutability. Mm. I think that's a really, really nice thing, especially like they use OS3. Um, as I said before, OS3 is a Git. It's basically Git or um, a binary files, and I think it's a really, really nice like approach because they use a um, a uh, a package manager called well, actually a hybrid package manager called RPM OS3. So even though you install like even though like the system is immutable, you can still install RPMs from RPM OS tree. And what it does is it generates an image and then you can boot and have the um package installed. Mm. And another thing that I like a lot from Silverblue is like as I said before, they push newer technologies. And I like being that like edge where I can report issues, I can be like uh, uh, report issues and like um, to help here and there and things like that. And right now I'm using Fedora 37, which comes with GNOME uh, 43, mm-hmm. and that's I think that's in beta. It, it's not even stable yet. Um, it, so I can um, I can report issues to Fedora, and they can have you know a really stable, um, more stable like upgrade and things like that. Mm-hmm. And another thing that I like a lot about um, Silverblue is that they try to make it very user friendly at the same time. Like if we ignore Anaconda and Fedora Flatpaks, like they use a utility called Toolbox, mm-hmm. and Toolbox is like a little container um, utility for development, and it's really easy to use. Like you just have to type in Toolbox Enter, or actually I think it's at first it's Toolbox Create. It creates a Fedora um, container. Mm. Uh, comp- completely mutable and then you type in toolbox enter and then you can install applications using dnf which is like fedora workstations like the, the mutable distributions uh package manager mm-hmm. and especially when like at least in my opinion like even if i use immutable desktop like Fedora workstation or even arch linux i would still use toolbox because i don't want to use like i don't want to install development packages on my host system. I want it in a place where I can easily get rid of and if like if something ever goes wrong. And I don't want to like deal with dependency hell and upgrade issues and things like that. 